it's not totally perfect. The table's a little tall. <laughs> Chair's a little low. I heard a train sound out there. Wouldn't expect to hear it. Train where I'm at. <laughs> oh, feels so good. Feels so good. Good morning. Looks like a decent room. Well, it's a decent room. The room's clean. Uh, the room's clean. The hotel's sure nothing. Look fancy to look at, but I appreciate that. Early riser, good morning, Will Bill. And good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and uh, this is Coffee with Ken. It is Saturday morning. It is July 6th. It is uh, 5.26 a.m. Happy Saturday. This is a little show I've been doing for quite some time. It is a show about me talking. Good morning from South Africa. It's a show about me uh, sharing some feelings, sharing a good morning, Mortgage Zeus, sharing some feelings, sharing the ups and downs we have in life, kind of just sharing experiences. And I've always, I've realized during the show, I think the best story to be told is life. And uh, I'm sure, again, I hear a train. I'm in Bozeman, Montana right now. I wouldn't expect there to be a train station very close to where I am, but maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, I think the best stories come from uh, life. And uh, I bet you most writers and most um, um, uh, sorry, I'm just waking up. Um, movies and what have you are told from experiences that the author or the um, screenplay writer, I guess it's called, uh, experiences in real life or imagines during their day, their day-to-day. And uh, again, this is a show I've been doing for over five years. And it's about me talking and sharing some stories that happen along uh, my path that is life. And about six weeks ago, I left my hometown of, we'll just call it Chicago, Illinois. It's actually Naperville, Illinois, but just outside of Chicago and uh, rode my scooter out uh, to take a job working in Yellowstone National Park as a waiter and uh, was nervous, was excited and uh, had been there working hard for the last six weeks. But I'll tell you what, it's weird living in a national park. It is weird living in a national park. Uh, Your little community or your coworkers that you're working with every day. And I don't know how many people we have working to run our area of the park, but it might be, I don't know, 500 people or 1,000 people. But it's a very set number of people. And the people I see every day are the people I see every day. And there's really, yes, there's tourists coming in and out of your life and there's so those are new people, but they're uh, kind of flashes in the pan. <laughs> uh, you know, their story is kind of similar. They're coming in, they're from out of town, they're being, they're going to be here three days and they're going to go see Old Faithful. Uh, but outside of that, it's kind of a shallow interaction with most tourists, not shallow like it's bad, but it's just very short term. And again, in this the conversations you have are about the beauty of the park or the uh, going to see Old Faithful or the canyon or Lake Yellowstone. And the conversations you have, at least I've had, um, don't really run the gamut like they do uh, outside of the park. And it's been a weird experience for me. But anyway, we'll talk about that more in a minute. For those that have been watching a while, you know it isn't just a show about me talking. You know it is also a show about me sharing my love of coffee. And I will tell you, I will tell you, one of the simple pleasures in life is making your own coffee and having your own bathroom and having your own food and being able to go to Starbucks or Target or 
RV shopping. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I have a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me, and I am so excited to take my first sip at this early hour on the Saturday morning. And it is pretty early for a Saturday. Again, it's 5.30 a.m. I'm not working today. It's my day off. Why am I up at 5.30? I don't know, because I was excited to take on the day. I was excited to take on the day, and I'm excited to have my first sip. My hope is wherever you are, uh, whatever you're doing, you have a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Uh, I don't even know what kind it is. I don't even know what kind it is. I'm sure it's a low-cost hotel coffee that I made out of this little mini baby coffee thing. Tear open a packet and you put it on top of this little... I don't know what it is, baby coffee maker thing, and you pour a cup of water in the top, and you push the button, and out comes, uh, out comes uh, a beautiful hot cup of coffee that you made yourself in your own little space, in uh, with your own bathroom and a TV, and uh, I don't know the world outside. The world outside. And not that the world's not outside when you're, uh, uh, hey, who is, Carol is saying she's doing her stretches while drinking some coffee. Way to go, Carol. Way to go. It's so good to stretch in the morning. I haven't stretched this morning, but I just woke up. I laid in bed for a while and I thought about things. Thought about life, thought about Montana, thought about Wyoming, thought about national parks, Yellowstone, Old Faithful, uh, and the beauty that our human interaction and the importance of human interaction. Again, I wrote out here six weeks ago, uh, I have a lot of financial responsibilities and uh, switched careers and left I'd been uh, in sales for most of my life. I graduated from the University of Illinois in 1990 and uh, became a stockbroker, followed in my brother's path. My brother's plural, plural possessive, and uh, path and became a stockbroker and did uh, kind of fairly okay at that uh, for about 10 years. And uh, in 2005, I became a realtor and did fairly okay at that for 17 years. Uh, but I was 50 years old or 50 couple years old and realized I wanted to do more than fairly okay with my life and fairly okay with my career. And I think as a man, and I'm sure women probably do too, uh, but oftentimes we'll identify ourselves with our, I don't know, career success. And I don't define career success uh, monetarily necessarily. But in the, in sales, um, it often is because we work to, yes, we're trying to help our customers buy and sell a new house. Or yes, we're trying to get the right suit for our customers. Or yes, if we're stockbrokers, we're hoping our customers do good investments and what have you. But I think a lot of our success is measured in uh, financial rewards and the size of our paycheck and what have you, the number of sales we did. And I realized I didn't either A, care that much about the uh, financial rewards. And I mean, I like money as much as the next guy. I don't dream of it and I don't crave it because I've had it and I know it doesn't buy happiness. And some of my harder times in life, uh, I was probably making the most or I was soothing <laughs> soothing my uh, uh, challenges I was facing with uh, getting a big paycheck or at least rationalizing uh, the struggles I was having with my big paychecks. And that didn't do a great job to soothe uh, the struggles and challenges I had, just like drugs and alcohol didn't do a great job um, dealing, you know, coping with anxiety or issues that we all face in life. Um, but anyway, a couple of years back, I decided to get out of sales because maybe I suck at sales and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I gave it my best. I tried real hard and I don't suck at it. I'm okay at it. 
but I wanted to do more. And I left that uh, life two years ago, uh, but still had a lot of financial responsibilities and a lot of expenses and uh, twice divorced guy. And with that comes a lot of expenses and uh, took a job in Yellowstone that provided housing and provided uh, uh, food and shelter, if you will. And in change of that or in exchange of that, uh, you work pretty hard and you live in a community that for me, uh, it's been a really neat experience, but I know I wouldn't want to do it forever. I know I wouldn't want to do it forever. Just getting out of the park yesterday and riding on my scooter through uh, Montana, uh, just seeing, I don't know, just seeing little inns along the side of this beautiful, beautiful road or seeing people that aren't on vacation <laughs> uh, doing their thing uh, and driving into, riding into Bozeman, Montana and seeing a grocery store, seeing a movie theater, having choices of gas stations to go to. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, hello, RJ. I slept great. I know it sounds crazy, uh, but I cannot tell you the simple pleasures each and every one of you takes for granted every day. Uh, you know, I hate to say, with your freedom. Uh, yeah, I get... <laughs> This is going to sound bad. And it's not this bad. It's not this bad. But I get room and board for like 500 bucks a month. And that's a good deal. And this is a good opportunity for me financially. Because, you know, I make a real living. And I make a... Uh, uh, I get paid a fair amount. Of, but I don't... And I have nothing to spend it on. Because I'm staying at a national park where there's no stores. Where there's really no restaurants. And uh, my food is served to me and my room is provided for me. But I'll tell you what, your room is served, your room is provided, and your food is served in a prison as well. <laughs> and it's free or in the military, you know, and you'll be staying at an army barracks and you'll be sleeping in cots and you'll go to the mess tent. And it's amazing. Uh <laughs> And I'm not trying to say it's, you know, like prison or like, you know, being in the military, but in some ways it really is. And the people in your lives are the same people you work with every day. And the experiences you have. Yes, I saw uh, various <laughs> geothermal tourist attractions yesterday. I can't think of their names. The Roaring Mountain with steam coming out of this interesting looking mountain yesterday on my ride. And I saw some stuff that you don't see in the suburbs of Chicago. But I'll tell you what, I was most excited seeing, <laughs> getting out of there and seeing a movie theater. Seeing them, I was more excited about seeing a movie theater. I didn't even go see a movie. Just having the ability to go see a movie or have the ability to pour my own cup of coffee. Oh, or have the ability to go RV shopping today um, or go to Starbucks or go to McDonald's or, oh my gosh, <laughs> I pulled into probably the lowest cost hotel. Uh, I found it on Expedia. <laughs> That's how tech savvy I am. Uh, love the energy though here. Bro, amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's funny. I, because I'm kind of bitching. I'm kind of bitching. But I bitch with enthusiasm. How does Bozeman compare to Gardner? Oh, oh, good question, RJ. RJ. I am at the Mammoth Hot Springs Hotel in uh, Yellowstone. And fortunately for me, they're a stone's throw away down the mountain, down this beautiful ride through the mountain or down a mountain is a town called Gardner. And Gardner is a town of like 3,000 people with a lot of the same restaurant experiences and uh, 
as the park, but there's more. <laughs> there's three thousand. There's homes. There's people that live there. There's, you know, new people. <laughs> there's schools. There's libraries. There's churches. But there's not movie theaters, and there's not Starbucks, and there's not McDonald's, and there's. Uh, so Bozeman is a real town. Of, not that Gardner's not a real town. For all my friends in Gardner, I apologize. But Gardner's a town of 3,000 that lives and breathes off Yellowstone because it's right next to Yellowstone. And it's beautiful. But I'll tell you what, Bozeman's a town of, I think, 50,000. And it's a town you've probably heard of if you live in the United States and you know anything about, like, I don't know, you've been around a while. Because I think I've heard of Bozeman. It's a town in Montana. And uh, it's one of the bigger towns. <laughs> it only has 50,000 people, but it's got a movie theater. It's got a college. It's got a Starbucks. It's got libraries. It's got an RV store. It's got a Target, I've heard. It's got various grocery stores. It's got this, the Bozeman Inn where I'm staying. Again, is one of the lowest, uh, if not probably the lowest price place in Bozeman. I figured, what the heck, I'm just going to sleep here. But I'll tell you what, the room is clean. I made my own coffee this morning. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to eat, but I know it's not going to be on a train. It's not going to be in our cafeteria. Oh, that feels good. Last night, I get to the, the big city of Bozeman last night, about 7 o'clock or 6.30. Checked into my hotel, it was... You know, honestly, looking around, could use some paint or could use some TLC on the outside. But I got into my room and it's clean and it has a TV. <laughs> it has a TV. And believe me, I know that happiness is not found uh, in a TV or on news or on cable or what have you. But I'll tell you what, it felt really nice. To lay in bed last night and watch a Western from 1959 that I found on TV. Ironically, the name of the movie was Yellowstone Kelly. Starring some big dude uh, who's just a tough dude. Who must have hung out with John Wayne in the 1950s. Just a big dude. Uh, And my wife visited Yellowstone. And you're right, not a lot to do in Yellowstone. There's a ton to do for like a week. You know, there's a ton to do for like a week. There's so many beautiful things. Uh, There's so many cool things to see and historical plaques to read and bison to look at and bears to search for. But if you're not a, if you're working there for a season and you don't love hiking, drinking, (laughs) or fishing, uh, you know, (laughs) yeah. And I say that with a smile. It's a good gig. I would recommend it for anybody that's uh, looking for hiking, drinking, or fishing, or needs some money and needs to be uh, housed for cheap. And in this world of spiraling housing costs, um, you know, I think it's going to be attractive to a lot of people. I make real money waiting tables, and I have no expenses other than five hundred dollars a, me- a week or a month, excuse me, towards room and board. I can't shop. I can't go to movie theaters because there are none. And so you 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 hang out in the park. Hopefully, you like to hike, but I'm usually too tired to hike. You share. I share a room with two nice kids. I work out. Um, But it's interesting. One of the things I thought was going to be a side effect was having, I've been doing my show for five years. I'd like to do my show, Coffee with Ken, professionally. Look at me. I'm wearing a Coffee with Ken t-shirt, and I have a Coffee with Ken mug. I love it. It's it's part of who I am. Um, And I thought one of the benefits of coming out here would be social media growth. But RJ's watching, and he watches my audience probably closer than I have. My audience on those social media platforms has plateaued and the growth has stopped. And it's okay. It's okay. I'm not worried about it because I know uh, the, the, the power that is coffee with Ken is just a guy telling his story, drinking some coffee. But I've realized, good morning, Diana, that scenery only gets you so far. 
in the variety of experiences I've had while living in that park, while living in Yellowstone, is limited. The stories I tell are uh, how tired I am at work and how maybe I'm going to leave the park or how I'm going to... But I'm going to go out to a city and experience life today. And I'm going to go to a Starbucks and I'm going to do some people watching. And I'm going to talk to people that live in Bozeman. And I'm going to go to Target. And I'm going to go RV shopping. And I might even go see a movie. My point is, life isn't about those. And I've known that. I've known it. Part of my introduction to Coffee with Ken was saying, uh, social media You know, if you look on Facebook, you're going to see and all your friends are going to be on some beach drinking a margarita with the sunset behind them. Life is not about drinking a margarita on a beach uh, with the sunset behind you. And on, on the flip side, it's also not about scenery in a national park. Life is about the people and experiences and that you have, uh, when you're not on the beach, uh, Having a margarita. Little ones can relate. Ever stay at home? Mama, little ones can relate. Oh, yeah. No, I stayed at home. I've been a stay-at-home dad multiple times. I'll tell you what. Life's also about loving on your kids. And I have four beautiful children. I cry every day. I cry every day. Uh, When I FaceTime, uh, I'm going to cry now. I have two beautiful little children. Augie and Eve, and I have two beautiful older children, Aaron and Morgan. I miss them so much. And uh, Augie, who's three, who has Down syndrome, is just learning how to say bye-bye a little bit. He goes, bye bye. <laughs> but it's the cutest little bye-bye you can ever experience on FaceTime. But I'm missing that. And Eve's tweet-tweeting at the birds and seeing birds and singing at her TV shows. And I'm missing my kids, and I'm missing society, I'm missing Starbucks, and I'm missing Target, and a library, and people, and humanity, and society. (laughs) So let's have a little more coffee. I'm missing making my own coffee, choosing what I'm going to eat. You know, the food's fairly good. The food's fairly good. Yes, that TV probably grow time. It will probably grow more. Uh, change locations. Yeah, and I'm here for five months. Are you talking about social media? Let me see what this person said. Hold on. Yes, once you get a RV where you can move around and change locations from time to time, it will probably grow more. Yeah, well, not take today all of Bozeman and enjoy every minute. Oh, I'm gonna, RJ. I only checked in for one night. I only checked in for one night because I wasn't sure if I'd like it. I'll tell you what, just laying in bed watching some Western from 1959 called Yellowstone Kelly. Was so nice. Woke up a couple times, stumbled into my bathroom, went to the bathroom, not in a community bathroom. Didn't have to worry about waking my roommates. Oh, 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 feels so good. Feels so good. So I woke up at 4.45 this morning and I was excited to go see what is out there to see what is out there, what people I could meet. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do anything or nothing, but I can do either. And it feels so good. There's a little university, I don't know, Montana State. I don't even know if it's little here in Bozeman. Again, there's libraries, there's stores, there's movie theaters, there's coffee shops. There's churches. It's not even Sunday. I'm imagining going to a church and wishing I could. It's just surprising how much you take for granted back uh, home, wherever home is. And I have people hopping on my show and I have mountains in the back and the sun is shining and the scenery is beautiful and I can pick up the phone and uh, show you where I'm at. Uh, and everyone thinks, oh, wow, I'm jealous. I wish I could be there. I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. I'm having more fun doing this show in this kind of low-cost <laughs> hotel, drinking my own coffee. Just excited that I'm not on the same dang bench. <laughs> you know, looking at the same two buildings, you know. 
and see uh, the same traffic roll by, RV after RV after RV, you know, and seeing the same elk. I mean, I don't know if they're really the same elk. They're probably not the same elk outside my door every day because there's herds of elk coming through, but it's really hard telling one elk from the next. They all look the same. <laughs> it's almost, it's almost not PC to say, <laughs> but let me tell you, coming from a human standpoint, most elk look the same. Speaking of which, and this is going to yucky some of you out, but on my ride yesterday, I saw a uh, dead elk along the side of the road and it looked like it was recently died. And I don't think it died of natural causes. I'm going to assume a car or truck hit it because these elk are big. Uh, if a car hit it, I don't know what hit it. Something must have hit it, but it must have done damage to that car. And it looked fresh. It didn't look, uh, you know, yucky. I mean, it looked, it was a dead elk, so it looked sort of yucky. But it was not, you know, picked over or what have you. Or, but either way, I thought of stopping and taking a picture for some reason. I don't know. Because it was I've never seen a dead elk, to be honest with you. And then I thought, wow, every bear in Yellowstone must be... Every mountain lion, every vulture... I don't know if vulture, vulture sniff must, must, must be coming to this dead elk. And it would have been kind of neat to have a camera on it and uh, watch it through the night and have see creatures come out of the woods and uh, uh, <laughs> experience that. Because I tell you what, that was a dinner buffet for a <laughs> grizzly bear that was hungry or a pack of wolves or coyotes or any number of creatures that are going to feed on that elk. And because of that, because of that, I struggled to make friends and maintain friends. Because of that, I didn't want to stick around and see what would come to eat the dead elk because they might also want to eat me. <laughs> so I left. I struggled to make friends and maintain friends, and I believe it's because of my disability uh, because I can go to Loud Area or a music fest. I can't go, I assume, to Loud Areas or music festivals or nightclubs. Well, you're talking about making friends in Loud Areas and not being able to hang out in Loud Areas. None of the things I talked about missing right now were Loud Areas, uh, like nightclubs or music festivals. Uh, I talked about the library. I talked about Starbucks and Target. And you don't need to go to concerts or... Uh, music festivals. As a matter of fact, I don't even know how they'd be a good area to make friends. I guess you could go with friends. Uh, find a different people. Find your people. Go to a library. Go to a grocery store. Go to Starbucks and sit there and look at people and make a commitment to yourself. Uh, it sounds like you might be a little introverted and it's okay to be introverted. It's not me. Uh, but make a commitment to yourself to go to a coffee shop and say good morning to somebody today at that coffee shop. I, I mean, a barista would be very easy to do. So if you're, at the, if you're unable to interact with humans, uh, uh, say good morning to a barista that's serving you a cup of coffee today. But if you're not that limited... Uh, say good morning to a customer at the coffee shop today and build on that and do it again tomorrow and next week go, you know, maybe this would be too fast. Go to dinner by yourself. A lot of people are scared to do that or go to a movie by yourself. A lot of people are scared to do that because they think they look funny. I don't know. I think it's cool. It allows you great uh, opportunities uh, to work on yourself and to think about things and to experience things uh, um, that you don't if you're always hanging with the same people. And I'll tell you what, I, I miss a lot of those same people. And I miss, again, I'm twice divorced. I miss traveling with my wife <laughs> and seeing things with somebody else and visiting things and going, wow, what a beautiful waterfall with somebody else. And 
I haven't taken as many pictures out here. Uh, you go to your by yourself to everything. Is that the same person? Hold on here. Is that the same person? No, it's not. Uh, yeah, going to the, by yourself to everything. That's what I've been doing. And I'll tell you what, I don't want to go to by, by myself to everything. But I'm certainly okay doing it. Obviously, I rode across this country on a scooter by myself. Uh, and really don't hang out with a whole... I mean, I like everybody I work with. I work with a bunch of great people. Uh, but I, it feels like I'm living in a small town uh, because I see the same people and we interact. Uh, and it's just nice being in a bigger town with more options and being in Bozeman. And I'll tell you what, Bozeman looks like a really cool city. Uh, it's a normal city or city. It's 50,000 people where I'm from. That'd be a town, but here in Montana, it's a city. So we'll call it a city when in Rome, but it has Starbucks. It has a college. It has uh, movie theaters, a library, churches, RV shops, and there's mountains over there. <laughs> and there's mountains over there. It seems like a cool town. <laughs> it seems like a cool town, and I'm looking forward to experiencing it today. And I only checked in for one night last night because, you know, I'm here to save money and make money. Uh, but I got to keep my wits about me and my mental sanity. Um, and I think getting out of the park for a couple days and experiencing humanity and society, or at least as I define it, uh, will be really, really good for me. And sleeping in my own room, my own room, it's a hotel room, but it's a, not even a high expensive fancy hotel room. And I'm looking at it as such a luxury because I have my own bathroom. There's a bathtub in there. I might even take a bath. Um, so, yeah. I don't know what my point was with that, but yeah. <laughs> Gonna, I <laughs> only have one more pack of coffee. Does your scooter get around the mountains okay? Yeah, my scooter does great in the mountains. My scooter's made for the mountains. Uh, I rode... Should I go make some more coffee? Yeah, let's make some more coffee. <laughs> Come on. Let's go make some more coffee. I rode from... Um, this is a very scenic, and the lighting's bad. We're going to lean you. Well, we're going to carry you with me. We're going to carry you with me. We're going to show you how we make our own coffee. It's going to be very educated. Look, I'm in a bathroom. I've got my own sink. I can make noise and not wake my roommates. Very good. Cool. You guys should check it out sometime. I should do commercials for this hotel chain. Somehow, I don't think it's a hotel chain. Hold on. I'm pouring my water in my coffee maker. Hang with me. I'm pulling out my coffee filter. Wait, wait. Oh, ooh, ooh. You know what these are? These are caffeinated coffees. 100% a... What? Irony of all ironies. Irony of all ironies. Which would you assume <laughs> is the decaf? Shows you what I know. Shows you what I know. It's embarrassing almost. So I'm this lively on decaf. I just drank a cup of decaf. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I would have assumed the orange pack was the decaf. Wouldn't you have? But the good news in that mistake, the good news in that mistake, and let me tell you, you need to find the silver lining in life. The good news is I have two packs of regular leftover. So I'm gonna enjoy two. Uh, I still got two more cups of coffee, which I cannot tell you how. Ah! I pushed the button and I didn't put a cup under there. Bad move. Rookie. Rookie mistake. I've done that before. I've done that on a carrot at my buddy's house and it kind of made a big mess. Felt bad about that. Uh, do a happy dance. No. 
No, I'm not going to do a happy dance, but I like the concept. I like the concept. I mean, I might do a happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. It's six o'clock on a Saturday morning, and I'm pouring a cup of my own cup of coffee in uh, Bozeman, Montana. And I know I saw the Starbucks sign. Hello from Australia, Sean. I saw the Starbucks sign, and I'm going to have some different experiences. Uh, I tell you what, for me, uh, I think there's more stress. I think there's a lot of stress. I think where I work might be more stressful than people know. You think because you're in Yellowstone, it'd be this perfect place. But I think the work can be stressful. I think the living situation can be stressful. I I think it's good. It's seasonal. Uh, But I think it's hard on a lot of people. And there's there's a lot of turnover. And there's a lot of people that don't feel like they fit in and go home. Uh, I think there's a lot of stress at work because we don't have the normal outlets. Uh, The warm, fuzzy feeling of having friends and family all around us. The warm, fuzzy feeling. Uh, Of having friends and family around us. So I think a lot of people fall into the old traps of drinking too much or what have you. There's a guy I know that uh, seems to be reading through the Bible while he's here. and that, Well, it's a good endeavor. And I read a book while I was here. And when I mean here, I mean back at Yellowstone. I read a book. <laughs> I did a hike. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to go get my coffee. You guys can come with me. Don't have many people watching today. Maybe you guys aren't as impressed with my little hotel in Bozeman as I am. But let me tell you, to me, it's a palace. To me, it's a palace. Ah, oh, and I got mountains. Let me say mountains out the window if I had the blinds up. And I have Starbucks awaiting and a Tarbuck, a, tar, a Target awaiting. You think, you think of dark roast at Starbucks? Oh yeah, I'm thinking dark roast. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking dark roast. How did I quit pot, Ken? Uh, I stopped smoking pot and drinking alcohol on the same day. I think it was October 28th. I don't think I'd smoked pot that day, but I still count it as the same day. And I never even really thought, but I, I had a, uh, the umpteenth fight with my uh, second ex-wife. And... Uh, stayed at a buddy's one bedroom apartment and was staying on an air mattress in his um living room and I had to walk through his bedroom to go to the bathroom at night it felt kind of strange but anyway I had had uh, six or seven beers that night I was feeling down I was feeling negative I was feeling the darkest of all thoughts and uh uh, said, you know, <laughs> hey, why don't we just try tomorrow without drinking any alcohol? And with that, I put pot because I think for me, uh, there's something I'm not able, I'm not willing, or I just don't have the desire to control or not good at controlling. And um, uh, just decided I wouldn't drink or smoke the next day and didn't. And here I am almost three years later. And uh, haven't drank or smoked uh, since. And honestly, I mean, I, you know, there were some good times drinking and smoking. But I'll tell you what, not having the temptation or the urge uh, to drink and smoke all the time. I'll tell you what, a lot of people, especially on these vacations, especially at Big Sky and Yellowstone, spend a lot of time drinking. It's a lot of, it's it's amazing. If you look at your day and you try and commit right now to not drinking today, if you are an everyday drinker, and for me that usually, that wasn't two beers at night before I went to sleep or a hit a pop before I went to sleep. Uh, That was Saturday morning. Hey, let's go to breakfast and then smoke some weed and then kind of do nothing and garden the rest of the day. 
But I'll tell you what, the I spent more time drinking and smoking than any other activity I did. And uh, it's shocking once you stop how much time you have. You're going, huh, it's noon on a Saturday. <laughs> Normally my wife and I would be going to lunch somewhere and ordering a cocktail or a beer in my case. Hey, there's a golf tournament on at three. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to drink, get a 12 pack of Heineken. Although I know I already have a 12 pack, another 12 pack of Heineken, and make sure I have enough weed and I'll smoke and drink all day and watch the golf tournament. Uh, Lefty says he got off opiates and Xanax and it was easier than alcohol, in his opinion. Huh? Were were you a bong type of guy? No, I wasn't a bong type of guy. Bong's a funny word. Bong. Bong. (laughs) I was frugal and often budget conscious. And because of that, I would usually smoke out of one hitters. There. (laughs) I mean, as far as smoking goes, they're very nice (laughs) self-contained little things. Mavericks, California, sober. Ah... RJ asked a little bit ago, was it the best decision ever stopping drinking and smoking? Uh, I'd say my best decision ever was having kids. If I had to look on my gravestone, (laughs) maybe nobody will write this on my gravestone. My greatest accomplishment in life, and not that it's a great accomplishment, but the thing I'm most proud of are my children. And, uh, uh, yeah, the thing I'm most proud of are my children. Uh, and me not drinking and smoking. Yeah, I guess I'm proud of it, but it's just, I almost feel like a slightly different person. Slightly different person. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not totally different, but I don't drink or smoke anymore and I don't crave it. Although I had a hard time. I was at Big Sky Montana yesterday and I didn't know what to do. There was a, it was all bars and restaurants. There was a coffee shop. I went to a coffee shop. I walked around. I walked into some stores. <laughs> I'm riding a scooter. I didn't want to. <laughs> First place I went was an art studio. I talked to a guy named Matt, who's an artist, who built his home 12 years ago for $500,000 and now it's worth $3 million, just to let you know. But anyway, talked to Matt and I walked in and I said, hey, Matt. Although I didn't know his name was Matt yet at this point. Uh, But I go, I'm not going to buy anything. I rode a scooter here, even if I wanted to buy something. And I'm sure it was fairly expensive because it was one of these kind of fancy studios in uh, Big Sky, Montana, which is an extremely expensive area. I went to the hotel. I went into the hotel. It didn't look like an amazing hotel. It looked like a kind of, I mean, it's a mountain resort. And I asked, hey there, just curious. I'm probably not going to rent a room, but how much are your rooms for the night? And he said, $700 a night this weekend. It's July 4th weekend. I did not know. Good Saturday morning, Lisa. It's July 4th weekend. So I wasn't there because it was July 4th. Um, do I have my retirement in the works? Just asking because I haven't started and I'm knocking on 40 and it scares me. Well, Southern Landscaping, let's just say I don't have, I might have it in the works, but I don't have all the finer details of uh, my retirement plan worked out ahead of me. And you said it scares you and you're short of 40. I tell you, everything scares me in life. Riding a scooter through the mountains scares me. Uh, Dying alone scares me. Uh, Height, I'm scared of heights. I'm scared of all sorts of things. I'm scared of all sorts of things. And one thing Coffee with Ken has taught me is, uh, and this is going to sound horrible. There's probably financial planners watching that are going to scold me say I'm crazy and I'm stupid, but I don't know. You can only plan so much for the future. And I think you're better off living one step at a time and doing your best today. And if you have a job going to work today, or if 
if it's your day off because it's Saturday, and stop being afraid about your retirement plans because it doesn't matter. Fear is not going to do a heck of a lot of good no matter what you're afraid of. And somebody, yeah, 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 you should have an IRA and you should put money in a 401k. All right. But, you know, the odds are just as good you're going to get run over by a truck before in the next 20 years. And I, I say that with a smile. But I think we can only plan for the future so much. And we can only be so careful and we can only be so frugal and we can only be so health conscious. Uh, but at some point, you got to live your life and put fear down. And the easiest way I have that, if you're feeling fear uh, about your retirement plans, uh, maybe say a little prayer to God and tell you, see what God says and say, hey, God, I'm scared. Uh, I'm 40 years old and retirement's coming up in 25 years. <laughs> God's going to laugh at you and say, you should see what Ken's got planned for retirement. I don't think God shares such personal information, but maybe he will. Uh, maybe he will. Uh, by 2030, I might get taken out by a drone with a grenade on it. Yeah, I have a sugar mama for my retirement. That one's, you're only 40? I'm not only 40, I'm 55. You don't know what tomorrow brings. And you, I'll tell you what, I say that as inspirational and it's sometimes gruesome. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's, if you worried about everything, I mean, cause we're all going to die. We're all going to die. <laughs> you want to be scared about something. Why don't you skip think about that? But you can look at that as a negative or you can look at that as a uh, positive. And again, I, I I always I don't always say, but I often say on my show, I got 30 years left on this planet, if God willing, want to see what I can do with it. And when I say that, I'm not thinking about how much money I can have in the bank when I'm 85. You know? It's never too late to get started on a plan. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. I have a whole nother cup of regular coffee waiting for me. And guess what? I have two Starbucks, not even two miles from my location. Do I think Bozeman is fun in the winter? Sure, because it's a real town. Because it's a town. There's, there's, yeah. I think Bozeman would be awesome in the winter. You know, again, there. I mean, I'm, I think Bozeman's probably really cool. Uh, it's at nine o'clock, Bish's RV, B-I-S-H. You guys can Google it. <laughs> Bish's RV, I think it's spelled B-I-S-H apostrophe S, RV. I was coming in last night at about six o'clock and I was wondering if I was going to have time to check into my hotel and then go find this RV store dealership that I knew existed that I'd seen commercials for um and lo and behold on my right I see Bish's RV it was on the way to my hotel it's God telling me to go so I went in I pulled on the door it was 605 they closed at six I started walking away because I noticed the lot was I could walk around the lot I had a couple people say can I help you I go I was just looking to See some RVs, well, 9 o'clock tomorrow. And I go, can I walk around the lot? And I go, well, they might shut the gates soon and you might get stuck in here. And I go, I'll be five minutes. So I walked around. I saw a couple RVs that are interesting. They didn't have any use. The, both the RVs they had that would be sort of interesting to me were north of a hundred, were about $100,000, and which is more than I want to spend. And I'd like to have buy a lightly used RV B-class RV, I've decided, uh, for mobility's sake, which is a conversion van. and uh, But they did have one on the lot there that I can go see today. And it's more than I want to spend, uh, more than I can spend. I, You know, I, my budget's kind of limited. Uh, <laughs> kind of limited. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Have I ever been out to the East Coast? Yeah, I ran the Boston Marathon once. 
Does Florida count as the East Coast? I don't think Florida does count as the East Coast. I had a couple fairly high maintenance uh, women work or eating at my restaurant yesterday, and I brought them a bowl of the clam chowder, and they're from Miami, and they're going, "Oh, we're from the East Coast." Came all the way from Miami to eat clam chowder. And I handed it to him. And she goes, we'll let you know. And I go, what will you let me know? (laughs) What are you going to let me know? It's a bowl of soup. How I like it. (laughs) Inside, I said, I don't give a damn how you like it. (laughs) I mean, I only care so much. (laughs) I only care so much. You're not from the East Coast, Miami. Yes, I know it's on the East Coast, but you're not. When you say the East Coast, you're not talking Miami, are you? <laughs> How about the Hamptons, Long Island? No, I've never been to the Hamptons or Long Island. I've never really been in uh, New York, but I <laughs> watched Seinfeld a lot, and they took a trip to the Hamptons. Uh, but I haven't been out on Long Island, and uh, no, I've uh, haven't been to the East Coast too much. I mean, I've been to. South Carolina. But again, I barely, I assume when you say the East Coast, you're talking New England area or New York or what have you. Um, So no, I haven't really spent much time on the East Coast. (laughs) But anyway, it's 616. I don't even know how long I've been talking. I probably started talking about 530. I'm so excited I could talk all day. I'm not going to talk all day because I'm so excited to go experience the world. But I will tell you what one more time. Don't take the little things for granted. Uh, Don't take the little things for granted. A little thing like having a remote control and a TV with cable. And I don't recommend you spend your days watching TV. But for a guy that hasn't seen a TV in six weeks, it felt so good going to bed early and watching some TV. And I'm going to go to a Starbucks today. And you guys take your Starbucks for granted. I'm telling you not to. For a guy that has his coffee, coffee with Ken on his shirt and his mug, to only have seen one Starbucks in the last almost two months, that's not right. That's not right. I'm going to go there. I'm going to bring my phone. I'm going to edit some videos. And um, uh, enjoy my time and enjoy my refills and enjoy my uh, big, tall, cold waters and people watching and planning for the day. And I think, although last night I was so under <laughs> underwhelmed by the exterior of this building, I think this room's just perfect for me. And I don't know why I'd want to move my stuff. Uh, They really should give you a discount if you're staying two nights in a hotel. Because they don't have to have a maid come in and clean it. You know what I mean? I mean, I want a couple fresh packs of coffee. But outside of that, I don't really even want a maid coming in here. I mean, I guess it's nice having your bed made professionally again. I talk a lot about making my bed. It's nice having a professional do it, but honestly, and this was in a Seinfeld. They had a Seinfeld about this. Uh, Am I going to do an official podcast? I don't know what that means. Why isn't this an official podcast? Why isn't this? People always say you should do a podcast. To me, I feel like I'd have to go to some studio and get in front of a microphone and start talking. Where this, I did an official podcast yesterday from a gas station in West Yellowstone. And I'm doing it from (laughs) my little cinder block hotel room uh, here. So I'm not sure. I usually do not disturb on when when they're more than a day at a hotel. We'd like to see you interview people. Who's we, Stephen? Who's we? Stephen said... We would like to see you interview people. (laughs) Stephen, who's the we you're referring to? Are you watching with somebody? I don't know. Would you like to see me interview people? Would you? Stephen, you watch every day. And you've never seen me interview anybody. 
<laughs> do you really want to see me interview people? I'm not sure you do. I'm not sure you do. You've never seen me interview people, and I watch every, and you watch every day. <laughs> so I'm wondering, I think a lot of people, okay, Jane says she agrees with Steve. I'd like that also. Everyone's saying they'd like to see me interview people. Who? <laughs> Who? I would have to organize. I'm just sitting here in my PJs. I know I have the talent, but I have true talent takes this. There's a million interview people out there. Oprah interviews people. Uh, what's his name? This The big podcast guy with the bald head interviews people. Everybody interviews. Everybody interviews. But I'm the only one that does coffee with Ken. I know I have the gift again. People in traveling in RVs. You could interview the man on the street. Huh. I don't know. The priest in the map room. I think a lot of people get a little uncomfortable with the camera on. Uh, I've had some people do it. I mean, I've had people hop on and passerby, passersby. I don't know. I would hate, okay, here's what I'd hate. I'm in my PJs. I rolled out of bed. I would hate to have to go to a studio, meet with somebody, get in the studio, wear a headset, and say, have like a plan and organize it. That doesn't sound fun to me. This is fun to me. <laughs> and okay, I appreciate that what you guys would like to see. I think, and I don't want to say I'm an artist, but this is my art, whatever that means. And I think one has to do what one wants to do. Whether you're a musician, you got to play the type of music you want to play. And if you're a painter, you got to type paint the pictures you want to paint. And if you're a, a content creator, you got to create the type of content you want to create. Because to be honest, me making an appointment to meet a guy somewhere and do an interview with somebody somewhere and ask him questions, doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. But rolling out of bed, pouring my coffee and saying good morning to 19 people that are watching uh, has kept me going for five years. But if I had to have a producer make an appointment to talk to the mayor of Bozeman at a Starbucks today, I don't know, maybe it'd be interesting, but it kind of sounds like work. <laughs> kind of sounds like work. And this is fun. <laughs> and if you love what you do, you're never going to work another day in your life. And I don't know how much fun I'd have interviewing the mayor of Bozeman. Don't forget us. You, you make it big. I don't, oh, when you make it big. See, Stephen, you think I'm going to make it big as this. You think I'm going to make it big as this. Yeah, if somebody, if a maid walked in right now and I I could talk to her for a little bit. But I don't know how much I would, I mean, I could probably keep a conversation going. Can I tell this cup is decaf? No. No, I mean, I probably can't. I don't think caffeine really affects me anymore. I'll drink coffee uh, late, you know, at seven o'clock at night and fall asleep half an hour later. I fall asleep in coffee shops. I fell asleep the other day. I was at a coffee shop in uh, down in Gardner. And I'll tell you what, I've been working a lot and I'm tired a lot and uh, need sleep <laughs> and was dozing off while drinking my coffee. I would just interview at random about you and your interactions with people and experiences. You could take requests. Coffee makes me tweak. <laughs> Sorry about the spelling. I am multitasking and working right now. No apologies necessary, Stephen. And I appreciate the thought, but I have a lot of people say you should do a podcast. I think this is a podcast. Yes, I'm on Instagram, but I'd like my audience to... I'll tell you what, I posted a video yesterday on TikTok and on Instagram, and on YouTube. And it's been seen like 50,000 times already. 
It's been seen like 50,000 times already. And I posted it last night. I wasn't interviewing anybody. I was just talking about my experience with smoking pot. And my <laughs> in these lives, next thing you know, the staff at the coffee shop tapping you on the shoulder saying they're close. And I know, Jane, I was worried about it because I heard laughter and I heard conversation. And I'm on this soft, cushy chair and I'm going like this. And I was listening to my videos, put me to sleep. <laughs> no wonder you want me to interview. I watch my videos. I rewatch my videos and clip them into shorts and reels and TikToks. And they put me to sleep too. <laughs> Sometimes I think I wish this guy was interviewing somebody. No. But um, I don't know what I was saying. I don't know what I was saying. Uh, but I'm excited about my day. I am excited about my day, and I'm going to feel so good once I check in for the hotel. And again, I'm cheap, frugal, broke, whatever word you want to say. Need to say, want to buy an RV, have dreams that are going to require some financial resources. Work hard, but uh, uh, work hard. Um, but first and foremost, I'm covering my financial responsibilities that I have, and they're to support my four beautiful children that live back home with their mamas in Chicago. And coming here, first and foremost, was because I, I have a girl going off to college, and I have two young, and I have two beautiful older girls and two young children uh, that needed more financial support than I was able to pay them doing what I was doing in Chicago. So first and foremost, I've covered my financial responsibilities, and they um, have been taken care of. And so it's okay to for me to spend, I don't know, $500 on a weekend on myself, uh, getting away from the park and staying in a hotel for two nights and just get my sanity back. Uh, so that's okay. But I have to talk myself into that because part of me wants to ride back to the park and not spend the money. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jade said I was talking about a video you posted yesterday about pot had 50 thousand views. I mean, it's on Instagram. It's on TikTok is where it's getting all the views. It was it, There was nothing special about the video. It was just me sharing some experiences and uh, saying that pot didn't help my anxiety. It's on Instagram. It's been seen a couple thousand times on Instagram and I don't know how many times on YouTube and probably 35,000 times on TikTok. Uh, nothing special about it. I do it all the time. I probably will clip one of these. But my point is, my videos get seen a lot. And I've had videos be seen two million times. And my audience continues to grow every day. And honestly, if I, f I think when I leave the park, I'm going to have more experiences to share with the viewers. And... Uh, more experiences to share with the viewers and more interesting stuff to talk about uh, than how waiting tables was the night before or how tired I am. Um, yeah. Am I into sports? Steve and I, not really. I used to be a diehard everything fan and wouldn't miss a minute of baseball of the Cubs or the Bears or the Bulls. Um... Chicago teams and I used to play a lot of sports. I used to play golf a lot. I used to run cross country and track and when I was little I played football and baseball uh, and enjoyed them all but I'm not I wouldn't say I'm big into sports right now. I don't I guess baseball's going on but I had to think about what season it is. Might be the all-star break. I don't know. I'm a big Illini fan uh, but even that I became so into my sports teams that uh, I would be depressed when they lost. And I took it too seriously. And uh, I took it too seriously and cared too much about millionaire athletes that didn't even know I existed. So I said, hey, I got to let this go and not let it affect how I feel about the day or my prospects or myself or who I am. And I uh, needed to kind of distance myself from fandom, if you will. But anyway, it's 6.30 a.m. I've talked for longer than I expected. I so appreciate you joining me early on this Saturday morning, sharing a little decaf and sharing a little regular coffee. I will tell you my next activity 
is uh, going to pour myself another cup of coffee, deciding if I'm going to shower. I'm probably not even going to shower. Maybe I'll shower. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm going to live life dangerously and not make that decision yet. But I'm going to enjoy my day. And I am going to enjoy the people I meet and the experiences I have. And I might hop on live later. And I'll probably, I got to sneeze, hop on live tomorrow. <laughs> And I'm hoping I'm coming at you live from this hotel again tomorrow morning. And uh, uh, I know I'm going to enjoy my day. And I hope you enjoy your day as well. And I hope you get uh, uh, had a great night's sleep. And I hope you're enjoying your coffee. And I, hi, Todd, I'm signing off. My phone is running out of charge. And I've been talking for an hour. Thank you, Rich Sternicle. I got two guys. Uh, that I went to junior high with watching right now, by the way. That's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. Todd and Rich Sternicle are guys I went to junior high with. Maybe before that, with Rich's, in Rich's case. Yeah, Rich, I went to grade school with as well. But that's kind of funny. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining. I so appreciate you. I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope you're excited about your weekend. You had a great night's sleep. You're feeling good. You're loving yourself. Uh, You're forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.